fourth show ever, but I'd seen and heard all they needed to. They were like a modern, updated punk rock version of the Beatles. They could seriously be that big, I caught myself thinking. Crazy talk? Yeah, of course. Yet at that moment, it made perfect, undeniable sense. The Lookouts never played that night. By the time Sweet Children finished, it was midnight, and our audience, worried they'd get in trouble with their parents, said goodbye and headed home. On the long drive back to Spyrock, twisting the radio dial in search of an audible signal and thankful for my aging truck's slightly more than adequate heater, I had barely an inkling of how the night's events were about to change my life forever. So, I kind of got out of, uh, out of order chronologically, because that sort of was on the next top of the pile. And there was something I wanted to do a little bit different uh, tonight than I've done at any of... Uh, my readings, and that's read from a different book. Uh, as some of you may know, I'm already sort of in the middle of writing a second book, and it's partly, partially a follow-up to, to Spy Rock Road, and partially some of it's dealing with stuff that happened while I was still on Spy Rock. And it's it's basically about lookout. It's it's kind of like the urban version of Spy Rock. It's my journey through the mysterious wonderland of uh, putting out punk rock records and having it turn into some kind of big deal after being kind of in the music business equivalent of the middle of nowhere. This is, uh, I have not read this to anybody yet before, and it's not really that polished, so 